Hello, and welcome to the 46th episode of Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. It's been a year since I started these episodes. And yes, in the beginning, it was called the Admiral's Club, and I started with a ding. But over time, I've made the show better and more richer and fuller of information. And one of the things that I've started to do is to try to give you an outlet to find out those questions that you don't know how to go and ask on your own. By having Ben and Sandy and others of CIG on the show, I've been able to bring you a lot of content. And I do that all the time. It's not that I'm special. They'll do it for any one of us. It's just that I take the opportunity and present it back to you all so you have a place to go to find out what the real answers are. Take, for instance, the most recent 350R and M50 controversy. I was able to get Ben on the show and put that fire out real quick and find out why they really put them up for sale first and then pulled them down for sale after that. Well, permanent sale is what we're talking about. And I promise you that's what I'm going to be doing for the next year, two, three, four, five years, however long I decide to be here doing this on a weekly basis. With that said, let's move on to the news and just say, yay, one year. And wow, it's been a ride, has it not? Um, right after now, you'll be seeing me go right to this, which I shot just a little bit earlier. And it's been great. Presents. And it's I got some gifts point. that arrived, and, and I've let's gotten go lots to of donations right and gifts in that way. I've gotten ships, things that I could show online, but I've actually gotten a couple of things here that people have sent me. This was supposed to come to me for Dragon Con as a press pass. It was made by Joshua Waxman, um, Style Cup. He's a amazing, one of my most loyal subscribers, one of them, I should say. And this is going to go to good use as I attend more of the cons. I also have a couple of boxes here, and I'm really excited to see what's inside of them. Well, a box and a tube. So I'm going to grab this box, and I'm going to open it up. And this is from Tim Wally, another one of my very, very, very loyal subscribers. And this is probably going to be loud at this point. I'm using just a standard IKEA steak knife to open it. I'll probably kill myself at some point. All right, this is difficult when you're actually trying to do it on a camera, believe me. And this is... Let's get rid of this. This is a Wing Commander Pilgrim Cross. Now, if you've ever seen the movie... Oh, my God, thank you so much, Tim. This is sweet. Oh, my God. This is sweet. This is what Ben wears around his neck all the time. Oh God, it's heavy. And there's a couple of other things inside of it. There's a, oh, there's a stand to display it from. Thank you so much. This will go to good use and it will go into my, oh, and a certificate of authentic pilgrim cross and knife. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm going to put this into my rest of my memorabilia that I have upstairs. That is pretty cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next gift came all the way from, I believe, Germany and Frankfurt. It came from Frankfurt. This is from Kamasur, who is one of my listeners and I believe also definitely 100% one of my fellow enablers. So let's take a look at what we got in here. A poster. I think I know what this one is. He had some images up of this online. Let's just let this come out. There it looks like there's two posters in here. And the tape is being very mean to my posters. Let's see. No, it is the poster, a poster. And it is the poster you probably got this from GamesCon. It's the poster of all of the... Wow. Oh, it's signed for the Queen, Chris Roberts. Take a look at that. We'll walk up to the camera. Wonder how that will make... That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. This will definitely go to Michael's tomorrow and get framed and put up on the wall. I've got a nice little shrine to Star Citizen and Wing Commander going on at this point. Alrighty, so let's get on with the news. 
The 350R and M50 sales, besides bringing on controversy, they actually enabled us to get past two stretch goals. First one we hit, I talked about it a little bit last week. We had broken the stretch goal, but we got the letter later in the week. So that unlocked the Arbitrators Guild. Go online, read about it. It's a position that's gonna be opened up. Apply for it if you'd like to. It looks like it's going to be somebody that's more or less an arbitrator. So if you have a background in legal assistant or legal aid, that will definitely help with this particular job function. I think that's what they're gonna call it. So the next piece up is going to be the $54 million stretch goal. I was wrong. I thought that they were gonna be going to non-monetary stretch goals at this point, and they didn't. They'll probably do that in the future when they see fit. But for $54 million, they went back to a poll. And they have a large number of things in this poll that we can select and we did select. In fact, we broke the $54 million goal and the ballistic Gatling gun, one of those items up there, won just by a hair beating out the cooling system. So these are free add-ons that they're gonna be given to us. And I can tell you this, it probably goes back to what Ben said on my interview with him in that they're going to be offering us a way to gain in-game UEC while we're playing Arena Commander. Only It's only gonna be able to be used in Arena Commander to buy weapons and systems so we could start testing them for the real game and have something fun to put into our game. I guess that's cool. So the next thing is gonna be my take on um, what they should do for the racers. And it's something that I put out in my vlog yesterday. And I'm doing that vlog every week. So if you want me to answer questions, if you want me to find out answers of questions, please place them in my weekly vlog episode and I'll go and use my resources to be able to answer those questions for you. Now, one of the ways that I thought that they'd be able to handle the lack of racers would be to offer a pass to people that want to use the racers in the simulation of the Murray Cup racing, which will be in-game, but will be more realistic in-game. Right now, it's part of the Arena Commander, which please do not think Arena Commander is the game. Arena Commander is actually a game within the game, and every one of Chris Roberts' Space Sims has had a game similar to this. In the original Wing Commander, it was an arcade game that you would go and play, and it got more and more involved as time went on. So. I thought maybe if they sold passes, that would be good, right? But will the passes lead people away from purchasing the ship? I really don't believe that. Yes, I changed. I had to get my iPad in my hand so I could actually move my teleprompter. What I think is that the ships are quite pricey for most people. When you look at the numbers of ships sold, the Aurora outsells everything by a wide margin, and it's because it's in that sweet spot of being $45 to $50. The next racer that's coming out, the Mustang, is gonna be in that sweet spot. I don't believe the people that are buying Auroras and not buying the $115 or $140 racers are going to stop purchasing those racers because they have a pass out. I think they will purchase the pass because they don't have the money. They'd rather earn it in game to buy them. As opposed to the person that wants to collect, the collector like me, who wants to own every ship in the game, um, not really, just the ships I like, but other people do, I think that a pass isn't going to be something that they would stand for. They want to purchase the ship and see it in their hangar. My idea has the pass letting people be able to use the two ships in Arena Commander, but not actually see the two ships in the hangar. I don't know. There's probably something that CIG is doing to make all this work out. And after the interview cleared up why they took them off of sale, which was to hold true to a statement that they made, they took the moral high ground. I totally think that this controversy is over. There's new racers coming. And let's talk about why I know this. All right. So there are new racers coming, right? There is an AMD card, I think it's the R9 980 or something like that, coming out um, this week, I believe. And in that box, and in all boxes of the AMD-based cards that are sold after that, there'll be an AMD library uh, Mustang Omega. 
and they'll be able to see it in game immediately. So I think sometime over the next seven to 10 days, Mustang is in our hangar. And they already alluded to us that there's gonna be two racers. So once we see a 45 to $60 racer, I think all this controversy is gonna be behind us. I really can't wait to see the Mustang racer. It's something that I think is gonna look amazing and I can't wait to have one in my hangar. I'm kind of, I have a limited variant of the Aurora, the LX, which is a personal exploration vessel. And I'm wondering if I'm gonna cross over that to a Mustang Omega. I'll have to wait and see, or if I'll just buy a Mustang Omega. Either way, I need to get one so I can review it here on the, sh on the show. Um, Arena Commander had a minor patch this week, and that has to do with flight control. Currently, if you had a gamepad, or I should say previous to this, if you had a gamepad and were playing after the patch 13 um, was introduced, you would be cursing the gods that this game sucked and I can't believe that they destroyed the flight model. Well, this patch has corrected it and it gives me hope that other minor abnormalities that were introduced in this patch are going to be fixed just as quickly. I still am jealous of the people that use mouse and keyboard and how easy it is for them to be able to target with gimbaled turrets. I think that all gimbaled turrets should be able to auto track. God only knows this is 900 years in the future. Auto tracking gimbaled turrets would not be out of the norm if everybody had them, but I guess it might make the game a little bit unbalanced. I guess we have to wait and see how CIG deals with this. Lore Builder came back out. Lore Builder is CIG's way of involving us in creating the universe that we're going to play in. Lore Builder has been out a couple of times before, giving us the opportunity to structure racing, syndicates, SATA ball, and other things. This time out, it's alcoholic beverages. It's, well, I was going to say it's party time, but they didn't give us our 890 jump or our clubs yet. Though I know the social module and PU module, player universe, persistent universe, are going to be out soon, or actually planetary module, they're all part of the persistent universe. I know they're gonna be out soon, I can't wait to see it, but this is cool, and it gives you an opportunity to actually help create a beverage that you like drinking, the name of the company that makes it, and the history of the company and what makes it special. And they left this image up here, which is the two bottles that you find in the locker from another universe. So remember, in my last video, I'm giving away a locker from the, another universe and another jukebox. I think those are the two best hangar flare items yet that give a lot of personality to your hangar. And you know, this is one way that just ties into that. You like that alcohol? Buy this locker. There's a couple of shots in there for you right now. Next thing up is the future of concept sales. I'm going to put this down now that I'm at the bottom and I don't really need that anymore. This is going to be the way that they're doing concept ship sales for now on. When the concept is checked off by Chris and ready to go on to modeling, gray boxing, animation, all that other wonderful stuff, they're going to have a sale on that concept. They're going to give us a week of, um, we're coming out with a ship next week. We're going to announce it on Around the Verse, and that's what happened so far. So we're going to be told a week in advance that a ship is coming out, and then on the Thursday before the ship sale starts, we're going to be told what that concept is. In this case, this week, we're told so far it's something sizable and it's something we haven't seen anymore. So, you know, it's haven't seen before. And that means it cuts out a lot of things like the 890 jump and the caterpillar and the retaliator and the gladiator and so on, Banu Merchantman, and it, it cuts out everything. So what do we get for buying the ship early? When we know if we buy a concept, we are not going to be able to even touch this in game for about 12 to 18 months. Well, they're going to give us some hangar flare. And the first piece of hangar flare that they're going to give us is a poster. After the ship is modeled in CryEngine, they're going to give us one of those cool models to put in a case. Is that enough? No, 
It's not enough because they went one step further. If you buy the ship during its initial concept sale, you will be getting it at the absolute lowest price it will be offered. And after that, each time it goes on sale until it goes in game, it will be a little bit more expensive. Take for instance the M50, which started at 80, went to 90, went to 110 or 115, right? So it went from 80 to 115, that's a $25 jump in price over the course of its sale. Same thing has happened with the um, package for the 350R, going from 110 up to 140. That was a $30 jump. So you'll be able to get it at the absolute, absolute lowest price. Now you better be sure that you're gonna be playing the game for a long time and have a lot of trust in Chris and his crew because you might be spending a lot of money on something that you never really see if you don't like the game when it's done. The last thing is more controversial. LTI came back. Now we've been told LTI is not gonna matter. And I still believe that's true, but I think because people like myself and other people just feel more comfortable with it, they're bringing it back. Now, all of my vessels that I own right now have LTI except for a couple of them. And now two of them that didn't have it before, the Gladius and the Sion Scout are going to have it because they're grandfathering those into this, or I should say they're retroacting. I forget which one of those it would be. My vocabulary suffers since I reached my late 40s. But they're going to be offering those immediately on the already purchased variants of the Gladius and the Xi'an Scout. What does LTI do? It negates you having to purchase insurance in the game as the game goes on, which we've already been told is only gonna take a one or two successful missions to pay for your monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, whatever it might be, insurance. Do I support this? Yes, because people that are putting their money up front should get something extra for helping the game go on. But if you notice, this isn't being called a limited ship sale, it's being called a concept ship sale probably to get away from that controversy that was caused by the 350R and M50. I totally support the way that they're doing this. I think it's wonderful and I can't wait to see it. It seems like we're gonna have another big patch within the next seven to 10 days. We know that it's 13.1. Hopefully that's more like 20 days and it comes out right around the next one of their big cons and that's gonna be Citizen Con. And what do I want to see in this patch? Well, I want to see the things that they promised us. I want to see all my ships. I still can't play my 350R. Somebody was really nice and told me that they'd loan me their account so I could play it on their account. Thank you so much. I forget your name and I'm gonna to have to go back and thank you again. But that's an awesome idea and I really appreciate it, but I want it in my hangar, right? Second piece is the customizable, um, controls, right? So I can customize them myself instead of picking from the predetermined ones that are out there, pre-made ones. I think that that's important because everybody is going to have a different place that they want to put things. And already I find where they have the targeting is a little bit too, it's too far out of the way and I can move things around. I think that's going to be good. They're going to tweak the performance. They're going to fix up some bugs, get rid of some memory leaks because I think there is one because the longer my system runs, the more apt it is to crash. Already we see things on the server side corrected. We could already connect to each other in public matches. They're still working on private matches and friend codes and those things are gonna be brought back into the game shortly. The big one is gonna be matchmaking. And I did a video on Monday, I released it as my vlog and in there you see me racing in an Aurora, in a Hornet and in a M50. And in the M50, I compete and almost win. And in the Aurora and the um, Hornet, I don't even come close to competing. So they're gonna have matchmaking that's gonna put like ships with like ships in racing. I wonder if that's gonna hold true for the rest of the game too. So they can truly make things overpowered. I would hate to see an all Aurora or all 300i or all um, Hornet grand, you know, whatever they call it, battle royale or squadron battle. I would hope that they put a certain mix of things. Well, actually in battle royale, maybe they should all be the same type, but in squadron battle should be a mix of things. 
and maybe you have to start using tactics. Use an Aurora as bait, and then go chase the guy down in your 300i or your Hornet. That sounds like a good idea, right? So we got quite a lot coming in the next patch, and then, of course, they still keep on teasing us with version 1, and version 1 is going to have the multiplayer ships released for the first time. So we've got a lot going on over the next week. I can't wait for it all to come into fruition and us to look back on it and say, oh boy, that was worth the wait. So we have a concept, concept ship sale. I know the Mustang's coming, and then we have CitizenCon, and there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be told, taught to us, told to us at that point. Remember, CitizenCon is where they tell us how the year has gone and what their ideas are for the next year. There are a couple of reveals, but the big reveals were at the more recent um, Gamescom, and then they're going to be a big reveal at the beginning of November over at Pox, PAX Australia. All right, so let's end this show with a couple of things. First off, the freelancer con test is going pretty good. We're 14 or 15 or 16 subscribers away from 1,200. That's amazing. We've already gone through 200 in a month. That means that my idea of this happening just before the um, Black Friday holiday of being able to give this away is probably not going to be it. It's probably going to be a little bit sooner than that. So thank you for sharing all my episodes, liking all my episodes, commenting on them. I really appreciate it. I am now going to start a new segment on the show, and we're going to talk about it right now. I run the enablers. Well, I don't. I leave it to the board to run the enablers. I think at this point, I'm more ceremonially the queen than I am functionally the queen. Um, a lot of my time is taken out doing these videos and working, but I have my own organization and I don't talk about it much here. And the reason is I don't want this show to be a forum for my particular organization. But what I do want it to be a forum for is all of your organizations. If you're recruiting, if you're having contests, if you're having meetups, if you're doing anything special, please send them to me and I'll announce them here for you on my show. I've got enough viewers now that I think that it would be a great help to you and I'd love to make this a public forum for you. Next piece is going to be, yes, I have a lot of contests. I do them. Sometimes I'm lucky that they'll be donated from other people. A lot of times I'm buying them with my own money, which thankfully recently has been subsidized by you all that are becoming patrons over at patreon.com. If you're a new subscriber to my channel, I'm a member of patreon.com. If you want to show your support and help out the show by becoming a patron and helping to make the show go on and get better, go on over to patreon.com forward slash Batgirl and all you have to do is give as little as $1 an episode or you could limit it to $1 a month if you want. There's some other... Um, values that you can give out there, five, ten, fifty, a hundred dollars if you want. I'm not asking for those at this particular point. I am just grateful that you all like watching my show. Tonight I am owing to be on Sonny's Diner. That doesn't mean you're going to hear it tonight. He's recording tonight. I think that Sonny is amazing. Sonny's Diner is one of the first podcasts after Dr. Hawk's show that I started listening to and it is an audio only and it should be out whenever he's done editing it. I don't know how long he takes to edit. I know when I do an episode with Dr. Hawk it's usually up the next day. Speaking of Dr. Hawk, we have a schedule. Thursday is going to be our next show. We are going to record it which means look for it on Friday. We won't have a guest. What we're going to be doing is just talking about the state of the game and tips and tricks and stuff like that. I would love to grow that podcast into something that resembles something that would be worthy of Scott Johnson's show, and that would be World of Warcast. Um, sorry, that would be The Instance. Holy cow, sorry, Scott. Didn't mean to mix you up with Mike. Um, but I would love to make that show something like that, which means I want help. I want a lot of help and you guys giving constructive criticism each show. If you can't comment on the show directly, um, you can do it possibly over at StarCitizenAA.com. I had Eris set up a page for that, and I think that's going to go very well. All right. 
we're at the end. This is it, the end of episode 46. Thank you all for being amazing and loyal and wonderful subscribers for the past year. I know most of you have only gained in the last few months, but let me tell you, it only gets better from here. This last year has been amazing and I can't wait to see what it's like next year when I'm celebrating my second anniversary of doing this show. With that said, well, that's all I got. So you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.